This lesson will cover the following topics. Lower engine removal. Lower engine checks. Now let's take a look at removing the cylinder block components. The first operation consists of removing the accessories fitted to the engine, including the crankshaft pulley and the engine flywheel. This relates to removing the sump by slackening all the bolts in the opposite direction to the procedure used for tightening, then the front and rear crankshaft seal housings. The final operation prior to removing the crankshaft consists of removing the oil splash plate, then the oil pump. Now let's look at removing the crankshaft. The first stage consists of removing the connecting rod cap bolts and the connecting rod piston assemblies. First, you must mark the connecting rod caps, then the crankshaft bearing caps, using an indelible marker pen. After marking, you must remove the connecting rod piston assemblies, then the crankshaft bearing caps. And finally, the crankshaft. Once the crankshaft is removed, each crankshaft bearing shell must be marked because the class may vary depending on the bearing. In this section, we covered the following points. Removing the cylinder block components begins with the removal of the accessories, including the crankshaft pulley and the engine flywheel. To remove the crankshaft, the connecting rod cap bolts and the connecting rod piston assemblies must be removed. Now let's look at the checks to be carried out on the cylinder block components. The checks to be carried out are as follows. Check for signs of corrosion and seizure on all of the removed parts. Check for cracking on the crankshaft. Check for scratches on the rotary sections of the crankshaft. Check for scratches or traces of overheating on the bearings and bearing shells. Check for overheating marks or scratches on the pistons. And check for any damage to the connecting rods. Now let's check the cylinder block. The cylinder block must always be cleaned prior to carrying out any operation. The checks to be carried out are as follows. Measure the nominal diameter of each cylinder. Measure the ovality of each cylinder. Measure the taper of each cylinder. You must use the appropriate measuring devices and take the measurements at three points of the cylinder along two directions. In any case, you must refer to the technical documentation. Now let's check the connecting rod piston assemblies. The connecting rod piston assemblies must always be cleaned prior to carrying out any operation. You must carry out the following checks. Measure the nominal diameter of each piston. On certain engines, measure the piston ring gap clearance. Measure the clearance between the piston rings and the piston grooves. Measure the nominal diameter of the big and little ends. Measure the center line between the big and little ends. And measure the external diameter of the gudgeon pin or the internal diameter of the gudgeon pin hole. You must use the appropriate measuring instruments. In any case, you must refer to the technical documentation. Lastly, let's check the crankshaft. The crankshaft must always be cleaned prior to carrying out any operation. You must carry out the following checks. Measure the nominal diameter of the crank pins and the crankshaft main bearing journals. Check the runout of the crankshaft main bearing journals. Measure the taper of the crankshaft main bearing journals.
Lastly, measure the ovality of the crankshaft crank pins. You must use the appropriate measuring instruments. In any case, you must refer to the technical documentation. The next set of checks relating to the crankshaft are carried out as follows. Fit the crankshaft and the bearing caps in the cylinder block. Tighten the bearing caps in the correct sequence and to the recommended tightening torque. Check the crankshaft lateral clearance and radial clearance. On certain engines, you must check the height of the crankshaft crank pins if replacing the pistons or the connecting rods. Lastly, you must measure the piston protrusion using a special tool equipped with a dial gauge. You must check that the measurement obtained for each piston is within the recommended tolerance. In any case, always read the technical documentation. In this section, we covered the following points. The checks to be carried out consist of checking for signs of overheating, corrosion, cracking, seizure, and any type of marking on all of the removed parts. The cylinder block checks consist of measuring the nominal diameter of each cylinder, its ovality, and its taper. The piston checks consist of measuring their nominal diameter, the nominal diameter of the big and little ends, and the diameter of the gudgeon pin. The crankshaft checks consist of measuring the nominal diameter and the ovality of the crank pins, the runout, the ovality and the diameter of the main bearing journals. The other measurements to be taken relating to the crankshaft are those relating to the crankshaft lateral and radial clearance, the height of the crank pins and the piston protrusion.